Greeting students to the School of Magical Arts. Uh, this is the XP Guild. I'm Bill Geltson along with uh, David L. Weaver over there playing Evan Carbray Borel. We created XP Guild. It's our D&D uh, &D slash role-playing channel. Uh, we were both YouTube and Twitch. And today we will be bringing... I will be bringing these lovely individuals into the School of Magical Arts, uh, which is set within our city of Umberhaven. Thank you everyone for joining me. Why don't we do a quick, uh, everybody can introduce themselves and the name of their character or whatever. We can do maybe descriptions as you walk into the school itself. Uh, then uh, we'll roll the intro video and get going and see where things go. So um, I'm just going to go by how I have things arranged. So we'll start with Mason. I'm Mason. I'm playing Gollum, who is a warforged artificer who deals with smithing. He looks to be made out of metal, and he currently is holding a hammer in his hand. Awesome. We'll go down to Sarah. I'm Sarah. Um, I play Minus Leaf Hunter, a three foot tall minotaur who, yeah, he sticks out by being very tiny. Very, he looks very young, uh, and he looks very lost. He he doesn't seem to have been out in the world very much. He carries this uh, letter that he got uh, the the invite, like it's the biggest gold uh, nugget he could find. He's not letting it go. Nice, yes. Um, to be admitted to the school is all, definitely a privilege, or is it? Uh, Firefly Retro, why don't you go ahead and go? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Firefly Retro, and this is, uh, this is Bulverax. Uh, he's a brass dragonborn, um, who might be a little bit more than he appears. Uh, he carries around, uh, this, uh, this dagger, uh, which he stole from his clan, uh, on his way to the, uh, the Umberhaven, uh, it's, it's college, isn't it? Um, Umberhaven School of Magic, yeah. So yeah, he's uh, pretty much uh, burned all his bridges uh, where he's where he's lived. So he's he's looking for a, a place to uh, feel like uh, where where he belongs. So uh, hopefully, um, hopefully he'll find it. Awesome. And last but not least, Dave. Hello, I'm David L. Weaver, the other half of the XP Guild. Uh, I will actually be playing instead of codeem codeeming this time around. Uh, I am playing. Evan Carby Boreal. Um, he is a human male, about six foot four, 175 pounds. Um, he is absolutely awestruck at not only Umberhaven itself, uh, which he's actually been to at least once um, because he found Golem. Um, where he's from, and uh, which is a really, really bad and scary place. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, walking in, I mean, he's uh, pretty much, um, Golem has gotten used to him by now, but uh, he is just chatting away um, about this, that, and the other. Ooh, what is that? What is this? Ooh. And at one point in one time, you uh, hear him say, uh, ooh, circles on a stick, and he runs off. And eventually you see him come back and uh, they're basically donuts on a stick that he's eating. So he's going to be a handful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You haven't really met Dave yet. Sorry. Um, no. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back.
plan, just to get a quick out of the way, things that we have to do is that the art that we've used for our minis and uh, tokens are from Hero Forge. However, we are not associated with them in the content of this show. Uh, is not been reviewed or sanctioned or whatever um, and may not represent the views or beliefs of Hero Forge, a Sky Castle Studio LLC product. Act legal out of the way. Onto the game. So, <clears throat> let's start. Uh, Wolverax and Minos, you arrive after a decent length trip upon uh, one of the many airships that traverse between the continents here in Marosia. So you guys have arrived into Umberhaven, which is a massive city, uh, probably one of the largest you guys have ever seen. Um, sprawls out, and as you kind of come in um, from the distance over the ocean and start descending to land near the coast at the airship docks, uh, you see this kind of like gray brown pollution of a sky that kind of dominates the city as um, industry has kind of taken over, but um, especially due to the city's somewhat corrupt nature, um, there's very little like check on that. I, you know, like, um, like environmentalism is not a thing here, <laughs> especially during this time. So uh, it's probably very different for uh, the two of you came from a land that is not as industrialized and not as focused on those things. Um, Minos being from like a forest region in Adril, um, and I'm not sure which exact part you in Sushua, the Wolverex had decided they're kind of coming from, um, but either way, probably a little bit of a culture shock as far as that goes. And as you exit this airship, um, you can hear kind of there's vendors and stuff that are set up near the landing area, uh, calling out, um, trying to get your attention, some selling beads, some selling food, some people calling out, you know, guide to the city, guide to the city. Um, but you will notice a very, like, striking, uh, there is a large, like, half-work gentleman standing there in, like, full plate armor, a shield and sword on his back, a uh, flowing cape, uh, like a blue flowing cape behind him, and he sees the two of you and looks at you. Minos, Wolverax? Calls out, trying to verify that his assumptions are correct in your identity. I look up at the dragon and then I look down at myself and I come to the conclusion that they can't be meaning someone else than us. Well, I doubt that anybody I'm, I'm else called Wolverax uh, here. <laughs> I'm not really too comfortable with being the first going over, so I'm going to wait and see what the dragon is. <laughs> well, I think he means us. Let's uh, let's see what he has to say. So we um, so we step over and um, well, I step over and uh, greet the uh, uh, the person who called my name. Yeah. So the um, large and a half orc stands close to seven feet tall, so I don't know how that weighs. I know Minos is kind of tiny. Um, just He's small. more than double my size. Yeah. <laughs> and he'll, he'll look down. I can headbutt him in the crotch. <laughs> yeah. He'll look down at Minos <laughs> and he'll look over at uh, Wolverex. That must be the two of you. There's couldn't have been a tiny minotaur and a large dragon traveling from across the ocean. Not I have been sent. Names, no. <laughs> I've been sent by the school uh, to make sure that you arrive safely without being harassed out here. Uh, Thank you. I am Benich, and I will uh, escort you in the city. Is there any business that you must take care of before we Make our way to the school. Uh, um, Rex shakes his head. Um, I think he just wants to just wants to get on with it. I think. 
All right. Very well. Good. Good on you. I hope your travels was uh, not too bad, not too encumbering. Fine, this is just happy to be done, back down on the ground. Ah, makes sense. And he will uh, gesture for you and he'll start walking through the city. Um, it is a decent trek, but there is like a large road that kind of leads directly through the center of the city over um, the two... Right, it goes over both the rivers, right, Dave? Um, over the two rivers uh, through like the heart of the city. And you see, you know, businesses and buildings all over the place. Um, again, the sky here is gray and it's probably a little bit darker uh, than you're used to on a normal basis when there's not like bad weather. Um, and he'll guide you through past some large buildings. You can see in the distance like a large like arena looking location um, as he makes through the city and through like the heart of it where it's super bustling, super busy, there's street vendors. Again, they try to call out to you and he kind of will glare at a few of them who try to like step up to you and they quickly scurry back trying to avoid the ire of this half orc. And eventually he will lead you to the gates of the School of Magical Arts. So there are large walls as you kind of approach and you start walking along the road which leads directly next to um, one of the exterior walls of the school. And it's a large like kind of uh, stone wall um, cobbled together, at least on the exterior, you see all these like kind of cobbled stones all over. And it it's pretty tall. It's about um, 20 feet tall um, to block out much of it. You can see a few trees that kind of dangle over and hang up um, in the distance um, on the other side of the wall. And you reach a gate and across the top it says School of Magical Arts. And along the side, there are very like various arcane runes that are lightly glowing on the pillar. And he gestures. Here we are. Yay. <laughs> um. So I guess he, uh, Wolverax. He, uh, he looks up at the at the sign and then looks at the at the college in front of him. And he says, "Not as big as I thought it would be." but it'll do. And then uh, he starts to walk forward just a little bit, just to sort of get inside the gates and uh, waits to see what the, uh, the half-orc does. Uh, so the half-orc uh, kind of stands there waiting, kind of rear guard sort of action, making sure that you guys both get through okay. Uh, Wolverax, as you step through, the haze that kind of pervaded and what perhaps seemed at first to be like pollution that was still like blocking the ease of vision into this school grounds. Once you step past the gate area, there's a bright blue sunny sky. The seems like here, for whatever reason, you're not affected by the pollution in the area. You can see now the grounds. There is a large marble building uh, directly to your right side uh, with like a courtyard there. There's a wooden um, stable that is kind of near there. Directly ahead of you, you see a statue uh, of a large elvish figure made out in gold uh, with his hands out. And there's a ball, a gold ball kind of floating in the air in front of him. And this green swirling energy uh, flowing in there. And this statue is sitting in the middle of a small pond that has like a stream that runs back and you can see kind of a waterfall falling behind that. He, the half-orc, will look down at Minos. Well, are you going? Minos just steps through. <laughs> Again, you step through and all of a sudden now it's like this bright sun, uh, it's warmth, like the temperature seems to raise a few degrees. So I'm what was a little bit cold and chilly within Umberhaven itself um, due to the lack of sun penetration. Here, it seems like this warm, uh, idyllic um, temperature. There's green grass that kind of, besides the main path that you are on, uh, which is like a um, solid stone, but that's been seemed like smoothed out. There doesn't seem to be like, there's a few cracks and spots where there's like uh, veins of different stone that are injecting into this gray stone kind of walkway that pervades the main walkway here and leads over to the house um, to your right. 
But other than that, there's like this green grass that seems to be perfectly kept, almost like uniform in color across it, kept to like not too tall, but not so short that it looks like it would be sickly or anything like that. And you can see this statue like I described, and you see near the statue there seems to be a group of other students gathered there, and they are of various ages. So there are some like children, there are some graying uh, individuals that are kind of gathered there in the statue, near the statue. And the half orc will step in the gates and gesture towards the statue. Uh, the rest of the group are gathering there. That is, uh, so far, those who have arrived for today's orientation for this year's class. Oh, oh, let's go over there. So you guys head over to the group, and as you do, we're going to switch to the other two. As you guys have Minus, been in the city. Uh, Minus prefers to walk on the grass instead of the uh, cobblestone. Yeah. And you find a spot, like, with the group, it's large enough. There seems to be, at this point, like, 30 or so other individuals that are gathered. That there's definitely room nearby that you can even be on the grass. Uh, while you wait, if that is your preference. Is right. there someone standing in front of the group, or are the group, like, waiting? Not yet. It seems that, like, he they've all been instructed to wait, kind of like you have. And there are a few that are, like, look very impatient, and, like, they've been waiting for a little while. Um, there's a couple that are, like, sitting down on the stones. Like, they have some sort of, like, cards out that they're playing some sort of game uh, while they're passing the time. Um, there's one that's like sitting back strumming a loop just kind of like like they're testing and trying to figure out um, how things work you know, like like they they know how to play but they're just kind of like warming up and not really playing like a direct tune but like a doo -doo -doo, doo -doo 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 -doo. like off and on kind of breaking in and out so as you guys kind of find your position and settle in there um, we go to Evan and Golem. So, those donuts were pretty good, but yeah, I don't know why they're called donuts, though. They should be called circles. Red circles, I guess? Sweet circles, maybe? Oh, he's busy talking to Gollum. Gollum's acting like he's listening, but Gollum's actually trying to find a bolt from his crossbow, and he's going to grab the bolt out and hit it with his hammer, and it's going to start glowing. Mm -hmm. And he's just going to hand it to Evan and say, here, take this. I take it. What's this? It glows. It should keep you interested. Oh, cool. I shake it. Does it start glowing? <laughs> it's glowing always. Oh, oh, oh okay. I, I write my it name. Glows. <laughs> so you guys make your way through the streets, and again, you come across these walls and you make your way through the gate I assume. Is this it? Should we go in? I don't know. Maybe we should go around. I'm just going to start pushing you into the gate. <laughs> what? Okay, fine, 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 fine. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. So you guys there's make There's so much to see outside of the gates though. But there's more inside. Oh, that's true. Okay. Let's go. So good there's someone with some uh common sense so as everyone has arrived within so you guys walk in and you see the same kind of scene that I had described before you see behind you uh, the interior of the walls are like a darker stone but on this side it's perfectly smooth almost like all the stones were fused together you see in the distance a large um, building kind of up at the top of the sloping hill. So from where the statue is, there's like a stream that runs, well, it's running in towards the statue, but there's a waterfall there that falls down and there's a bridge that goes over the um, stream area. It leads from like a large lake at the top of the hill, which you guys can't fully see. But next to the statue on, or next to the bridge on the left hand side as you're facing it, uh, is a large kind of, it's a reddish stone building, but you don't see any like, any seams in the stone. Like it all seems to either be hewn 
all together, like whether it's fused or whether it was a stone that was then formed. And you see like from your angle, you can see what looks like an open book like that has been chiseled and carved in a couple of different style stones to make it look like a leather bound book with white pages. So like marble stone that's been chiseled. And you can see also a large, a large stadium kind of in the distance as well. Um, this kind of open, open towards the river or the lake and the waterfall and everything. But you can kind of see uh, various like the benches that are currently empty from where you are. You see this group, the two of you see this group ahead of you kind of milling about near the statue and a large half orc kind of stands near the gates and sees you two walk in. Ah, welcome. Go join the rest of the students. I think you might be the last ones to arrive. Whoa. You're a minotaur, right? I am a orc, a half orc. Orc. Oh, okay. We have minotaurs, and uh, there's actually one in your class. Oh, really? Oh, quite small, he is. You're half orc. Yes, and you appear to be a human. And you're from where? I come from across the oceans. Awesome. At some point, maybe we'll get into that. For now, go join the group. What group? The ones by the statue. Oh, cool. Okay, and Evan just runs off. What does the statue look like it's made out of? Uh, so it seems to be, uh, like, gold. Whether it's gold entirely or gold, like, covered, it's hard to tell from a distance. Um, but yeah, it seems to be like a golden statue, and it almost, like, has this glow with the way the sunlight beams across it. Plus, there's, like, a green kind of, um, hue. Almost like, I don't know, like, if you have a pool with the light on, and then, like, the light reflects off something, and it's kind of got that shimmer... But in this case, it's going to be green as the the energy within this globe that he's like suspended between his hands kind of reflects off of his face and body. How close do I have to be to actually examine it closer to see if it is actually metal? Uh, I mean, I guess give me some sort of check. Granted, <laughs> there is a pool around like there's a pond, so it's not like you can touch it unless you're going to walk into the pond. I might. Because <laughs> I'm distracted by the shiny metal. Yeah. So what check would you like? Um, what would be, what do you think is be a skill that you're using to examine this? Given that you have, I know, certain proficiencies. Um, I would think either history, maybe, like I could know the history of it or investigation probably. Okay. Uh, whichever one you want. Like, investigation's probably more, like, trying to determine the actual thing that it is, perhaps. And history would be more, yeah, like, trying to get some background info or whatever. I got a 19 on investigation. Okay. As far as you can tell, it does seem to be gold. Again, you don't see any, like, lines where it was, like, chiseled or put together. Uh, it seems to be very smooth and perfect as far as that goes. But yeah, I mean, it, it looks to be like a fairly solid gold statue. It could be someone turned to gold. And you hear this like tiny minotaur nearby as you're examining the statue, kind of musing out loud as to what it is. You hear that tiny minotaur go, it could be someone turned to gold. <laughs> I just shake my head and go, eh, maybe. Ingolvrax would overhear this and roll his eyes and go back to leaning up against a, a, a wall slightly maybe away from the group, maybe find some shade somewhere. Right about the time you start to walk away, you hear another voice say, Well, quite right. It could be someone turned to gold. You are definitely thinking in the right, right way around here. That is uh, quite possible. You see a man dressed in like a black uh, colorless shirt He's got like a black stole with um, hexagon sort of like symbols on it. Uh, very uniform, covering the whole thing. He stands now where 
just a minute ago it seemed like there was no one there, but he is kind of looking over at the statue that you guys were just looking at and then turns to the group. Well, welcome students. I'm Ardent Vandril. I am the Dean of Admissions here at the School of Magical Arts. I will also be the counselor of sorts for your class. Uh, your first year, I will be the one, if you have any problems, any uh, issues, any questions about the school itself, I'll be the one to help guide you. I raise my hand. Yes. Do you have any of those circles on a stick? Perhaps, but not at the moment. This is uh, going to be a brief introduction to our school, and soon I'll split the groups up, and I will take some of you uh, on a tour, and some of the others will go into the Hall of the Aspirant. What's that? You the will... Hall of the what now? Yeah, the Hall of the Aspirant. Uh, you will see shortly. Um, yes, it is uh, where the school will ascertain your skills and your proficiencies and which path we shall direct your powers. Granted, so, some of you, I think it's obvious. So, so, as soon as he says that, I go off into like weird action-packed martial arts dance. Definitely won't be the school martial arts for that one. Yes, so here is our school, as you've seen. Uh, behind you over there, to my left, your right, is our diplomat house for those of uh, high standing who may come to visit. Beyond that, uh, we've got the ground stable over here to uh, my immediate left, or your immediate right. And behind all those is the main schools of each individual um, magical focus class sections. Uh, those of the marshal are on the other side, um, near the stadiums. Um, over here to my right, or your left, is our um, initiate dormitories. Uh, you will all have a place there, and we will start to um, hand you out your locations of residence for the next year or two, depending on your advancement speed. And yes, uh, I will show you the rest soon. Any direct questions before I split you up into groups? All right, then. Uh, so, back behind us, some of you have already met our uh, lovely greeter here, uh, Barik, is going to take half the group on to the whole of the aspirants, and I will take the other half. And he kind of just like looks out and puts a hand out and he says, okay, uh, these 23 will go with Barik, and you 23, um, of which you four will be in that group, will come along with me. And then uh, Badik steps up and starts kind of calling it. All right, all right, kids, let's go. Let's find out who's going to serve. I mean, who will uh, be in what group? Yes, come on down. Uh, and he starts leading uh, past the group. And that 23 that he kind of suggested goes off with him. And uh, will go into the Hall of Aspirants. Um, and he kind of like steps up and starts guiding in small groups at a time, keeping some of them out. Well then, the rest of you are going to be able to travel around with me here and get an idea of the school campus. Uh, so we are going to head the opposite direction from them and we'll end back here at the Hall of, the, of Aspirants. And so he kind of like will take you through slowly through. Um, I'm gonna just grab one of you, so Minos, um, for those who are watching the map, um, will kind of guide you down through the pass. And um, as he's walking by the statue, he will say, uh, as some of you noticed, the statue that is a statue of our founder, Sandrian, uh, the Archmage who founded the school some 2000 or so years ago. <laughs> is he still in there? Well, I guess this is a mystery that I don't even know. Um, it's very well possible. You never know. Sandrian was quite an eccentric. Uh, he helped carve out this area 
for Umberhaven, and as a reward was accepted this area which was outside the city walls. But yes, uh, definitely, um, definitely had a good setting and standing for us and began the school. Um, no one's quite sure why he decided to start the school, but um, yes, it is uh, quite, quite nice, isn't it? Um, it'll kind of like lead you down and lead you through these paths and he'll start pointing out a few buildings as he walks by, he will point out. Uh, so here to our left is the School of the Divine. Uh, any who are more f chosen for the ability to use divine powers such as uh, clerical uh, nature would or um, some of the paladins will do some studies here as well um, depending on their focuses and such but yes um, the actual spellcraft side of things will be done here um, and he'll lead on a little bit further um, and up into this little square and uh, here we go to the right here is the school of artifice those who are focused on forging and crafting magical items and the use of magic using um, such kind of mechanical means. This will be their main area of study. Uh, behind us here is the forge. Um, also attached, of course, to the School of Artifice, but also used by our mundane crafters who may make the standard weapons and standard items that uh, are used in our day-to-day -day use. If we continue over here, this uh, marble building is a school of arcanum. M many will study here the use of any sort of arcane magic use. So again, some of our Tissifers will do some study here. Some of our sorcerers and wizards will all do studying here as well. Um, our wooden building here, of course, is the school of natural arts. Um, those who use the more nature-based magics, like a druid or a ranger, may find themselves in this location and he'll lead uh, back down and as he passes this one it's, it's kind of like large grand um, with like pillars and very kind of fancy ornate design to this building um, again in marble as many of the buildings have been um, this here is our school of musical arts those are the bard form and he looks back at the one with the loot mm, perhaps you sir yes um, would, of course, uh, study here. And he'll kind of lead on for a little bit, and he'll point at the stadium as you're kind of walking by. Is, uh, and you're kind of, um, you've already made your way up like kind of a slight hill and a slightly slopes as you kind of come around all this, these pathways to kind of read this sort of upper terraced area here. This here up ahead is the Magecraft Arena. Um, Various uh, performances will be done there, and uh, many activities will uh, will be facilitated there, as well as the more formal uh, sporting activities uh, of mage duels and such will occur in that location. Uh, this building off to our left is the Tower of the Archimagus, our current headmaster of our school resides there and many of the items and uh, activities of which he performs will be done there. Uh, that is of course our headmaster Ari Hermaris and he will be probably making an appearance at some point uh, in the very near future. But um, Over here is our greenhouse. Uh, many of our druids will practice some of their items there and up ahead we have our facility our faculty offices um, you can see over there uh, we call the dark hall I hopefully none of you will end up in that location but at some point we will uh, yes so what is the dark hall mm, yes uh, if you are found on the wrong side of our magical I don't know, I guess outside they call them guard or police or whatever. Uh, there may be a room for you in the dark hall. Um, mm, if you step okay. too far... One of those places. Yes. Uh, perhaps the more mundane version would be a prison. But it works very differently here. 
Um, many of the guilds within the city have mages, and some of those, when they are skirmishing, if they get caught, we are kind of granted their protection for a little while, if you will. Um, yeah. Then there's some of the war worse ones that will be more permanently here. Don't worry. Dean won't have anything to do with that. And I kind of look over at Golem and go, wink, wink. Um, if you continue past the Dark Hall, there is the Founder Manor. Uh, there are various um, more state functions and such that happen there. Um, for current purposes, you won't really have much use of being there at the moment. And it'll lead you under this. There's like an overhang that goes from the Tower of the Archmagus into like the admin building there. Like there's a walkway that kind of goes from one building to the other. And there's also, you can see one from the faculty office building that goes over to the admin building. And as he kind of leads you over, um, this is the main entrance to the Magecraft Arena. Uh, if you're going to attend one of the functions, you will enter from here and you see this like large, like, it's fairly tall, like probably 100, 120 feet up where you can see the, the backs of the top seats in the arena. And uh, there's some like buildings that are attached to it um, off to either side. And then these large red kind of like overhangs that help shade some of the seating from the sun itself. And he'll lead you into this court. Uh, this is what we call our commons when we're full activity. Um, and you can see here, probably for the first time, a few students that are kind of like lounging around this area um there's some um, there's a fountain just like a very simple water fountain kind of like flowing down um it spouts up a little bit of water and then just like cascades down a couple of steps into like a pond um and you see a few students that are kind of like lounging around in chairs like reading or um talking or eating or whatever uh so to our right is the admin building um, as you're facing the fountain from here. And uh, over here to the left is the Arcane Gate. Uh, it is our local watering hole uh, for those who want to blow off some steam, perhaps get a drink, or something other than what our main cafeteria offers, which, to speak of, is right across the way here, is the cafeteria. We will have time to stop for food later. Right, right, uh-huh. Um, but yes, uh, I, I lean over to Golem. I bet you they have those, those candied roaches here, too. All right, then. Um, as we continue, uh, yes, the cafeteria is open um, from the morning time, just about an hour after dawn, to uh, just about an hour after sunset. Um, you're welcome to come in and get food pretty much whenever you like. Um, the meals will be on a rotated basis based on the time of the day fairly standard um, and that is all provided as part of your uh, admission here at the school and he'll lead you down and there's like a grove of trees here um, amongst the grasses um, the picture they don't have any leaves but they will be their full you know their full leaf um, trees and you see like a track that goes around a strange like court sort of system there with what looks like stars and as you look at the court itself the ground seems to almost shift and move as like this nebula image that's on there um, shifts and swirls and moves um, there are a couple of like darker lines that seem to be more fixed within it that seem to form some sort of um, perimeter or whatever um, and you see bleachers that kind of surround this on two sides and he points out uh, this is Sandrian Stadium um, there are some of our sporting events will happen here um, moving on as uh, he looks at his watch or not really his watch I guess but yeah they have watches so he looks at the watch he's got and uh, he goes oh well yes well, we'll need to be moving along quickly uh, we have the martial master uh, for martial classes uh, Fighters who have, again, the ability to use arcane magics to train here, as well as our paladins. Some of our clerics will have time here. Or even um, the more martially focused um, artificers and such would, would be here. 
So the whole time the Dean's talking about martial arts, Evan in the background is doing his martial arts moves and whatnot. <laughs> yes, some of you would be a problem, won't you? Um, <laughs> he'll lead on. And he'll come to a large uh, marble um, building that seems to have uh, like a couple different layers to it. As you can see from the outside, a couple of different um, shifts and focuses and they'll gesture to these large like so the building's the white marble but then it's got like this large black stone like doorway with um like silver handles um uh, and he'll point at this uh this is the grand hall uh when we have school dinners uh which we will have at the end of each um kind of month session there will be one large school dinner and a few others for special events um this is where we all gather and uh eat our meals together and then he'll kind of continue on and start walking through the grass and through this area and he'll point out uh, these are the mage quarters some of our higher level students will stay here and uh, as they complete their studies and walks past like a little well um, and another gate this is our oost gate our, our with our oost quarters uh, some of our other dignitaries and such may stay here, visitors. Uh, if you have family or such that may visit, they may stay here. Um, and he'll walk by. And you see a couple of students walking out through this tunnel. And some of them look really excited. Some of them look a little, like, frightened. Um, and you see the half orc kind of standing at this side, gathering up those. And there's already, like most of the students are kind of gathered there already um, as you guys kind of walk by seeing these various like looks of between frightened excited kind of wondering what they got themselves into um, looks and he'll continue on um, these are servant quarters for anyone who um, stays at the Oost quarters as well as many of the servants that help uh, service the campus itself uh, up ahead are the apprentice dorms. As you uh, graduate from initiates, you will be granted a, a more spacious, uh, elaborate dormitory here. And he'll kind of lead you around to the front of this building. And <clears throat> you see, again, this like marble building with the front, though, are um, two s statues formed together. Um, to kind of make this archway with this like tunnel that leads up to the doors and the statues are um, two creatures and they're it's hard to tell like they don't really have facial features or anything they have like hoods up and even if you looked up their faces like this blank kind of like nondescript general form of a face um, and they're they're reached out and their hands are kind of like touching at the tips to form like this long archway um, that you walk through towards the doorway. All right, now. We've got uh, a bunch of you, so I'm only going to send, um, let's see, 23 students, about seven or eight. Uh, yes, we'll start with the first seven, then. Um, are any of you guys ready to go right now? Eager to go first? Ooh! Ooh! Yes. yes. Perfect. Come on. Come on forward. There's someone else raises their hand, like all excited to a female uh, <laughs> half elf. Oh yes, you. Yes. Come on forward with them. Um, uh, let's just speed this up because we are running out of time. Um, and he'll gesture to your group plus, uh, so that's five plus two more, and just kind of gesture them in. So following you in, there is. A female elf that will join you guys in there. There is a female human, and you walk into down this tunnel, and then there's a set of doors which swing open as you guys start to arrive. And you notice that um, that Ardent holds back, like he's standing back with the rest of the group. Uh, go along. Uh, there will be some to guide you once you have gotten down the hallway, and. As you open the doors, or as the doors are open for you, you see a stairwell that leads up into a dimly lit uh, interior up above. 
So, uh, Wolverex just um, holds back. He, he kind of wants to be uh, dead last, I think. So he's kind of just waiting to see what everybody else does. I'm assuming at least oh. Evan is probably rushing forward. Oh, I'm going to look at Evan and say, do you still have that crossbow bolt I gave you? Oh, yeah. In this area. I, I, it <laughs> I hand it back to him. I don't need it. No. I don't think you can be in the dark. Okay. I'll put it. <laughs> And as I say that, I make another one. Yeah, I mean, it's it's dimly lit inside. So, um, but as you kind of, as Evan starts rising up these stairs and the interior of this, um, the interior walls are like a darker, um, almost black stone um, as you go in, which almost seems to suck some of the light in or just acts to not amplify the light as like a white wood. So you make it to the top of these stairs and you can kind of see the room opens up a bit and you see standing there, there are actually quite a bit of people kind of standing around in almost a half circle. And one of them starts gesturing for you to come in, angling, like trying to encourage you to kind of come forward. And oh, I'm running. Uh, you see a male knoll standing there kind of a purples and blacks um, in more of like a robe style um, standing there uh, gesturing. Come along now. Come, come along. Come on in. Yes. You're no. Yes. You're Where are you from? Where am I from? Well, I actually lived in Adril for a while before coming to the school. Absolutely fascinating. Anyways, please step ahead. And as you kind of clear this opening and where there's like almost a semicircle of individuals of probably close to a dozen or so um, creatures of various races and, and sexes and sizes um, standing around, you see an old uh, half-elf looking female sitting in a chair with like this helm on her head. And you can see... Um, behind her, like in this almost like throne that she's sitting in, is a pillar of solid like square stone that leads from roof to floor. And behind it are somewhat glowing like arcane runes. And from the helm she's wearing, there's like almost like cords that seem to be run back and fall down the back of the chair and lead towards that pillar. <clears throat> and once the group of you have come up uh, they will look at you. Uh, all these people kind of like their vision shifts like they fully recognize you. And um, a female of like kind of blue skin and almost like flowing hair and almost seems like she's like a little damp um, on her skin. Like it almost looks like it's um, like beads of water are almost like formed upon her skin. Um, and she will turn and and say, Greetings, one and all. I am Misha Berov. I am the Dean of Natural Arts here at the school. This is the Hall of the Aspirant. You will here go through uh, a quick test just to uh, determine your affinity for magic and how you would like, uh, well, where we would like to place you based on uh, that affinity. So, it, is is she she an elf or a mermaid? Uh, she's a water genocide. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I basically pop off and immediately say, "You're a water elf, aren't you?" No, but uh, it's okay. It's, uh, many do not see me. Um, uh, Genasi, uh, we have an affinity for a natural element. And mine happens to be water. Awesome! Yes. Uh, I am quite fond of it. But I am attached to that. But, yes. Anyways. We are here to test your affinity. Now, if you have any questions or any hesitation as to this, it is the time to decide you would not like to be part of the school, and you may exit. Uh, this does not come without risk, I must say. Some do not make it. 
Some are affected in various ways. Any problems? Any issues? So yes. Wolverex, sorry. <laughs> so Wolverex considers turning around and just walking out, but um, I think morbid curiosity keeps him here for now. Uh, yes, little one. In your name? Uh, uh, my name is Lifanta. Oh, yes. And uh, wh- when I use my abilities, things tend to go badly. Oh, perfect. Well, this is probably the perfect place for you. I'd say stay. You do have abilities already, so more than likely you will probably be sorted into a more of a, like a natural casting or sorcerer or something like that. Um, Yes, but we will help you. For now, you will not have to use your abilities. The room will do its own work. And it will be safe for anyone else. You'll be the only one in the room. Uh, yes, uh, the uh, Warforge there. Do you have any ale before I take this test? Oh, no. Sorry, um, I don't. Uh, I prefer my students to be um, sober for this. I just roll my eyes and go, okay. I didn't know Warforge particularly drank or ate. It's quite intriguing. Oh, it's amazing of what he can do. Oh, yes. Well, uh, who would like to go first? Me. Me, me. Me, me, me. Our enthusiastic. Not her. Inquisitive. Me. Inquisitive. point to the other one. Yeah. The other elf. Yeah, Maybe. she was already like, uh, and she puts her hand down as uh, the... <laughs> Misha points at you. Oh, yes. Um, and your name, sir? Evan Carby Borrell. Pleased to meet you. And I put out my hand. And she'll reach over and shake your hand. Pleasure oh, to it's wet. That's awesome. Yes, it is a side effect of my racial affinities. Uh, Evan, so please. And she gestures to a wall that was very solid and a doorway appears like it almost like the rock shifts but you don't hear any sound or anything it just kind of slowly opens up Uh, maybe a portal in the door or whether the door slides it's hard to tell um but an opening forms step on in there is a circle in the center Uh, stand stand amongst the sigils there and when the door shuts your test will begin okay and i'll walk on in yeah. So you see on the floor, there's like these red glowing symbols on the floor um, in this dark room. And as you kind of step forward past the threshold, the door slowly um, will close behind you. And again, forms into what looks like a portalless as, as, as it's slowly fo- uh, closing behind me, I turn around and do, do this little move as the door shuts. All right. The sigils will glow a little bit brighter. As you step upon the sigils, Mm -hmm. they flare even brighter around you, almost blinding you for a second. Give me a wisdom saving throw. Big money, big money. No way. Natural 20. Oh, damn. All right. So 23. (laughs) So you step upon this area, and all of a sudden, images start forming in the room. Um, You see various like artifacts appearing and disappearing and you see creatures of strange form that you've probably heard stories about from your grandfather and from those that you kind of studied with of uh, almost demonic beings and crazy monsters that roam uh, the areas around where you are you see a book peel open and runes slowly pop off of it. You feel like this warmth rush through you and you take this all in with kind of this strange, oddly serene, like acceptance, like your, your brain, your body, everything just, there's no issues. It is easy. It is simple. And as these images flash and what it seems like it takes forever, but actually outside there's only moments pass and the sigils will dim and the door slowly starts open again the you can hear on the other side 
the uh, half elf woman say, uh, This one will make a good mage. I come out. And as you step out, a uh, male hobgoblin will step forward, and he's got like kind of like uh, leather or studded leather armor on. Um, he's hands are crossed across his chest. He has a book that's like strapped on to his belt. Well, you, it seems, will be in my school. I'm Greylock. I'm the Dean of the School of Wizardry. You're a hobgoblin. That seems to be a um, money theme with you. Do you point at everything and announce what it is? What? I'm just curious. Uh, I'm told you spent some time heading into places like Krantz. How the oh, hell I was born, did you... I was born there, actually. Really? How'd you yeah. make it out if you point at everything and tell them what it is? It was very well, obtrusive. Well, I mean, when you run into stuff that doesn't have a brain, it doesn't, you know, respond to you pointing it out and, you know, saying stuff. Mm. We try to stay away from the stuff that has brains. Fair enough. Well, uh, head back down that hallway, and uh, if you will wait outside with, uh, you know, in the grass or that area, once the rest of your group join you, we'll sort you out some more. Could I run to the cafeteria real quick? Sure. You know the way. Excellent. Don't get lost. No, no. Circles with on a stick. Yeah. And I'll run off. I just looked at them and say, I guess I'll go next. Somebody has to make sure he doesn't blow himself up again. All right. Um, so then you're, they gesture for you to enter and you walk in again. It shuts and uh, give me a wisdom saving throw. Five. All right. You feel hot fire kind of rush through your body. It feels like you yourself are being forged and formed for the first time. You see hammers and tools and anvils forming around you. Your head begins to kind of pump and the the circuitry and arcane works inside you that form you and your essence and uh, your kind of brain location um, seem to pulse and drive pain through your very being. Uh, you stagger a little bit as you see various various forms and you see some some again you see some creatures of weird make and form um, monstrous creatures from the region in which you were found and then you find yourself being sucked back and you are stagger a little bit as you take two points of like psychic damage as this kind of like energy rushes into you but you're made of sturdy uh, material and you are able to withstand and you <clears throat> feeling perhaps a little more unsettled but as you step out you can hear the woman say school of artifice for this one I believe not that it's too surprising for Wolf Watch, but... And then uh, the other eager uh, half-elf woman will kind of raise her hand. Ah, please, I, I would really like to go. And so she she almost like runs in even before they say, okay, fine. And she goes in, the door shuts, and then it slides open. And they look in, and um, one of the attendants go... All right, who's next? And no one walks out at that point. Um, uh, you, the little one, why don't you go? Very, very slowly. <laughs> at one point, like, as you're walking so slow, you feel like this gust of wind come up behind you and almost, like, shove you in. <laughs> and the door starts to shut behind you, like, the minute you step in. Oh, crap. <laughs> and then the door will kind of come to a, a shut, and then... You feel the wind subside once the door is closed, and you can step forward. Um, the sigils glow as you step on and give me a wisdom saving throw. 13. Nice. Uh, yeah, so 
I'm not dead. Yeah. You step on and you feel the energies within you flash forward. The room seems to be on fire, but it doesn't seem to hurt. It doesn't seem to bother you. Um, you feel uh, the rush of wind come through, like the trees and the scent of your home kind of rush in. You see various forest creatures. Um, you see some of the larger minotaurs from your clan that seem to be like forming around you and then subsiding. Um, then you see the rush of a face come at you, this large, like demonic looking face with horns and it's screaming and belches out fire, which washes over you. And then it subsides and everything is quiet and the door starts sliding over. And the natural abilities in this one would aim towards the sorcerer's school. I run away. <laughs> uh, I want yeah. To go out to the grass again. As you run out, you see a like dark furred male tabaxi standing there in kind of like white robes, and he guides you up. Come, come, my little one, come. Uh, it is all okay. Uh, I am Shade, and I will uh, be one of the instructors for the School of the Sorcerers. Why don't you go out and relax and get some fresh air? It'll be fine. And uh, one of the others will signal to Wolverex. Why don't you uh, go ahead on in? So, uh, Wolverex uh, confidently walks up to the door and sort of hesitantly, uh, he's, he pauses for, for like a half beat. Um, he pauses a second and then and then he walks in. Again, it shuts and a wisdom saving throw for you. A wisdom saving throw. This is not going to end well. Oh, okay. uh, ooh, uh, 19. Very wow. nice. Yeah, it's just <laughs> fine. Uh, yeah, so you step onto the sin sigil and it will flare to life. Um, you will feel uh, this rush of warmth come over you. Um, you feel calm. You see the mountains in your home region. You see large dragons uh, soaring above in the sky. You look down at your, was it bronze skin? And you see it bleach to black. But then you see blue scales kind of forming in various locations. You feel uh, lightning kind of crackle around the floor, almost skitters with lightning and the mist forms over the ground. You see fire kind of erupting, a pillar of flame swirling in front of you. Um, sorry, I have people doing yard work. Um, <laughs> and then <Perfect> timing. <laughs> it all, I know, right? Uh, then it all <laughs> kind of subsides and the room is empty and calm and quiet and the door slides open. Oh, another sorcerer. This is very interesting. And again, you see uh, the same uh, dark furred tabaxi who had kind of guided Minos down the hall will guide you uh, as well. Well, welcome to the school. Uh, two new aspirants in one session. That is quite good for us. And he'll uh, gesture for you to go down. And you'll exit down this long tunnel and it's it kind of um goes down the tunnel and twists and turns a little bit you see a few statues along the way of various like robed figures um and they kind of seem to shift through time periods of clothing and articles and such um but then you exit and you're back outside amongst uh the sky the sun feels good um the air in there now seemed very stale and stagnant versus out here where there's almost like this light breeze flowing through the nearby trees. I think at this point, let's take a short break and welcome back everyone. Um, thank you for all those who have joined us. Um, Raven Rolls right now is in the chat and we had some other people which I lost all the names because we ran the spam destruction thing in the mid because that was getting bad early on we are still learning that side of things and thank you to retro firefly 
for the invaluable help. Definitely check out her streams. She does some pretty awesome stuff. If you want to explain, actually, go ahead and explain a little bit of what she do. Sure. Um, I'm Firefly Retro. Uh, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening, uh, British time. Uh, and I do code streams. Uh, so if you uh, enjoy uh, watching people code and beat their head up against uh, up against a wall, uh, you know, dealing with bugs that I've introduced myself, you know, I'm my own worst enemy. <laughs> uh, if that's your thing, uh, yeah, follow along, Firefly Retro, uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Very cool. Yep. So luckily, she's got some more Twitch experience and knows how to uh, deal with some of these issues. So I'm sure she'll be introducing us to some more methods to deal with some of these issues. <laughs> um, and and I know um, Raven Rolls in chat was saying if we made a mod, he would deal with it as we went. But uh, in the mid of, middle of the stream, and I don't actually use Twitch open right now, I use my OBS. Uh, I'm not unable to figure all that out at the moment, but we will figure that out in the near future and perhaps uh, jump him up to a mod or something so he can help us bash all these damn spam bots uh, as they come about if, uh, if this other program doesn't take care of everyone. And uh, yeah, so we join back. Uh, your group has exited and uh so out of the seven that went in there's now six of you kind of milling about outside the hall of the aspirant um the other group that was there before has now been let off and they are now doing the tour that you guys were doing but in reverse um and you probably see them in the distance probably somewhere over near the stadium uh the sandrian stadium um and the half orcs kind of pointing things out and doing his quick, gruff kind of tour of the area. Um, Evan had run off to get some food. And is coming back. So they got this thing where you put it in this tortilla thing. And oh my God, it's so good. I already ate one of them. I'm eating another one right now. You want, you want to bite? Oh, I, I forgot. You can't control them. Oh, anybody else want to bite? Yes, he even brings props. <laughs> so you'll see um, along with you guys um, there's a female elf that kind of joins you um, that had made it through and um, I forgot who else I said came with you. There's a half elf who is no longer with us. The female elf you four and there's one more. Um, a female human, I think, came in, too. And they're kind of... Uh, look, uh, well, the female elf seems very kind of calm and collected, and she's, like, sitting and kind of thinking and almost, like, meditative. will sit down on the grass and kind of cross her legs and kind of sit there and kind of stare off to the distance, like, pondering what she saw. Um, female human will kind of come over and and uh, look at you guys. Was 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 that weird for any of you, or was it was it just me? Oh, I'm Seinbur, by the way. Um, yes. I am. Hold up my hand. It's all covered in grease and whatnot. No, that was natural. No. Oh, okay, natural. I'm kind of worried as to what you are into, but, uh, yeah. Okay. All kinds of stuff. Very interesting. I look over. Hey! You're a minotaur! And I point <laughs> to Minos. <clears throat> yeah. But, don't you supposed to be taller? Mm, also, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm Evan, by the way. Minos. Please meet you. And I hold out my greasy hand. What's this point of the grease? Oh, that was, I think, a taco? They call them tacos. I don't know why they call them tacos. It's just meat wrapped in a tortilla with a bunch of stuff inside. They should call them wraps, you know? Not tacos. That's true. Yeah. I think. See, 
logic right here. Very logical. Yeah. I know a lot. You can ask Golem. Oh, he's he's the metal guy right over there. Is the Dean still there? Um, so at this point, yeah, shortly you will see the Dean of Admissions kind of walk around and look you over and as he kind of like comes around you'll see a few more um, there's about four more students will kind of like stagger out looking a little bit more distraught perhaps than uh, you guys seem to have taken it. I'm gonna look to the Dean and say you said that there was a watering hole here right? Does that mean they have alcohol? Quite, Like yes. strong morphin ale? Yes, if that's your thing. We have, we do have a contingent of dwarves here. Uh, here amongst us. Yes. Uh, did you want to take a quick break and go there? We will be showing uh, shortly, as the rest of your group, uh, the final group is in there now. And the, the rest of your group will then uh, lead you to uh, the dormitory for, um, for you initiates. But uh, do you remember how to get there? Yep, it was right next to the commons, right? Yes, uh, quite. And uh, it'll... Oh, yes. Uh, human. Uh, Evan, right? Yeah. I, I know how to get there. All right. Then... Good, I'll need a second one. <laughs> feel free. Um, if, if any of you need to take a quick break, this is a perfect time. Uh, the last uh, eight are in there at the moment. I, after finishing my, my, my uh, taco wrap thing, I immediately look over, look up. You're a dragon, right? I'm born. Oh! He just he just looks at um, Evan like quizzically, like, why why is this why is this uh, small thing talking to me? <laughs> the dean is just kind of like sitting back, um, observing. <laughs> And so watching. you're a dragon born, not a born dragon. If you like. So are you a half dragon? You know, like half elves? Or half orcs? One might see it that way. Mm. Awesome. Name's Evan, Minus, by the way. Minus gets a weird look on his face as if he has considered the making of a dragon and a human. <laughs> I hold out that's my how, that That's how you make half things, right? Yes, exactly. The logistics of that is mind-boggling. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I did say, did you say Evan uh, reaches out your hand for, for a handshake? Yeah. So, yeah, okay. So, um, Wolverax, uh, he puts his uh, left hand on his, uh, on the pommel of his dagger, which is attached to his belt and reaches out for a handshake, and uh, you get like a, a static shock uh, from that. Woo! <laughs> that was fascinating. <laughs> kind of tingly. <laughs> you know what so he's with... Baldurak seems a bit pleased with himself. <laughs> Did the Dean say that we had a break? Yeah. Minus takes off most of his clothes and run, r r roll around in the grass. <laughs> nice. He doesn't get to see grass that much. Alright. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have and grass where I'm most from. of his life. What? No. No. We have death and destruction. Oh. Like in my head. Kind yeah. Of. And then you, then you pray a lot to that things will get better, but it never does. Why, why I'm here now? To make it better? No, just to get away from all the praying. <laughs> I'm assuming about this time <laughs> is when Gollum comes back and he's holding four ale bottle things with him. And he books to all of you and says, does anyone want one? Oh, yes. And I immediately grab one. <clears throat> so Wolverine grabs one as well. <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? It's a pint, so it's a yeah. It's a for for you. It's it's huge. They come in pints. Oh, Minos! I didn't offend you, did I? When when I was eating the taco wrap thing, 
Why? It had meat in it. You're made of meat. Oh, oh, that's true. I've never had human before. When you say that, I just look at you and say, human tastes pretty good. Hmm. Fascinating. How do you taste? I don't know. Someone, someone told me that uh, we taste like pigs. All right, yeah. students, uh, gather around. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, I am uh, interested in this group right here. You'll be roomies. Um, oh, God. <laughs> and then he goes to the next group. He starts, like, pairing them off in groups of, like, four or five. And um, come along, come along. And he'll start leading you over to the uh, initiate dorms. And he'll start, like, passing off um, each group to various, like, students who are a little bit older than uh, than you guys, or, or at least maybe not necessarily older, because the students can range from like you know early adolescence to you know elderly. Um, but he will walk over, and there's a, a female dwarf that's kind of leaning up against the pillars of one of the dorm areas, and she looks up as he leads you guys closer. And says, ah, Brusona, Brusona, my dear, I've got a uh, interesting challenge for you, I believe. Uh, these four here, I think, would be great uh, apartment chairs. So can you show them to the open apartments? And uh, Brusona here will be your um, resident uh resident in charge of this, your apartment area. She's in charge of this building. She is a fourth year student here. And uh, if she has any issues, she will bring them to me and uh, then we'll have to deal with things. But uh, her word for the most part is law. Um, she's, she's a great girl and she'll take good care of you. What is uh, Brusana? Uh, it's a female dwarf and She's like kind of, you know, she's short and kind of thick and chunky as dwarves tend to be, um, with like a blonde braid of hair that's kind of like hanging down and it's braided up. And there are various like gems and like metallic baubles that are kind of like weaved into the braid as it makes its way down. Uh, she's wearing a um, light blue dress uh, with like white trim here and there. <clears throat> Is she taller than me? Um, you're what? Three and a half? Three feet. Yeah, so she's she's almost a foot taller than you at this point. Yeah, doors tend to be around four, four and a half. She'll look around at you guys. Well, I am not so sure about you, group. You're a dwarf, aren't you? And I will show you to your rooms. Uh, here we go. Come on in. And she'll lead you in. Sorry, my uh, dwarf was improvised and bad. Um, <laughs> she'll lead you in and uh, kind of there's a set of stairs that kind of spiral up this area. So like as you walk in, there's like a lobby area and there seems to be like cubbies um, off to one wall and then halls that kind of lead down and she'll point at the cubbies. Uh, you will be in group H. Uh, it's the, your room, your apartment room area, so any notes or anything that you need uh, to be passed to you can be left there in group H, or if you need to leave something for someone to pick up, that is a good place to put it. Uh, those cubbies are for your use. Um, we're going to go up the stairs. We're on the third floor, and she'll start leading you up the stairs. Um, taking her time, like not trying to rush you at all, but she'll take you up and she'll lead you down one of the side halls and open up a door. And as you look in and she'll walk in ahead of you guys, there's like a lounge kind of area. So there's a, um, like a water basin. There is, um, like some couches there. There's like a bookshelf there that currently doesn't really have any books on it. 
Um, there's a desk um, on one wall, a desk on the other wall, um, and then there is uh, several doors. There's five doors here. There's um, two off to the left side, two off to the right side, and one straight ahead. Um, <clears throat> so this is your apartment. Um, you will all have your own individual room. You may pick whichever one suits your fancy. I'll leave that up to you guys. Uh, the door there in the middle is for relieving yourself, uh, for washing as well. Um, we'll go over the various incantations you need to use if you want uh, water to flow in. Um, it's a very simple um, use of it. Um, doesn't take any power for yourself, uh, for your bathing or or cleaning needs, and uh, the room itself, this the whole area, is your responsibility to keep clean, and uh, we'd like it to not be too loud, as we do have other students in the area, and that is my job, to make sure that uh, no one's being disturbed. And uh, yes, you are welcome to bring food here from the cafeteria, or from whatever, um, Yes. Uh, any questions? So these um, these rooms uh, are they uh, single rooms or are they, they bunks or or how how are they laid out? Uh, and she will uh, snap her fingers, and the doors will all slam open. Um, on all the, all the doors in this room will slam open for you. Uh, each person has their own room. There is a single uh, bed. They are all uh, a little bit larger than uh, a standard humanoid, because we never know who's going to be here. Um, when we do get the giants in, they do have special rooms that we had to make, because even giants? They are too... Oh, yes. Um, in fact, tomorrow, most of the other students will arrive for the rest of the semester. You will see. What, what else? What else is in these rooms? Um, just, so, just a bed? Yeah, each room, there's a bed. There's a, um, like a chest that you can store things in. There's a, a set of drawers, um, like a um, wardrobe set of drawers sort of thing. Um, there's like a closet area where you can hang things in there. And um, there is in each room um, a kind of plain gray like robe that's kind of like hanging up in there um, <clears throat> in each room area. And uh, other than that, there's not much. There's um, There are windows on all of them, even though they don't necessarily face the exterior. But you will see out the window in the direction of the building would have a view, sort of a thing. So it's a weird, like, you couldn't gain access from the outside, but no matter where you're at, you look out the window, which is kind of like over the bed, you see the exterior. And there's drapes that you can close to, like, block out the light that would be let in. Um, are the windows open? Uh, currently, no, they are not open, because they are, um, okay. most do, of do them... Do they open, though? Are they, are they like, do they, do, they, do they swing open? Uh, the ones in your rooms don't. Uh, there is, um, like, so there's the door where the bathroom is, and then there's, like, a small hallway that goes down, and then there's a, mm -hmm. um, actual window there that actually is, um, had flown open, and you can feel the breeze come in from that. Um, and it's like a small hallway that kind of runs next to the bathroom um, area that allows in actual natural air and light to come through. But the ones in your rooms, because they are, like, where your room's situated, they basically, where the window would be is up against someone else's wall, but it's just a oh, magical presentation of the exterior. Oh, I see. So you get some natural light. So, so there's no like, real ventilation in, in the room? Yeah, not not much. There are, as you look around, uh, vents that are built into the room, and you can feel a little bit of like fresh air coming through, or what appears to be fresh air coming through, at least. Okay. Cool, thank you. Um, feel free to decorate or add whatever you like to your rooms um, and enjoy any questions I am um, I have a room on the bottom floor and uh, it is 
room A uh, is right behind the stairwell that we came up. I'm usually there. If not... So we're allowed to decorate how we want. Within reason, of course. I mean, don't break down any walls or, you know... Every do model anything. <laughs> Yes. No, um, I was planning to build it for hanging a forge in. <laughs> no, there is a forge that you may use at uh, almost any time of the day or night available, of course. Down, I think you saw it in your, your tour, but uh, your rooms are not for forging. Oh. I'm yeah. going to just stand that. We had a student <laughs> try, and uh, the fire got a little out of control. Um, it wasn't pretty. Is the room fireproof? Uh, well, we have added some extra runes that are designed to help uh, resist the damage fire can do. Proof, though, is very tough, as we have various levels of skill and power. Um, try not to test it out too much, please. She looks a little nervous. <laughs> she looks down at the, the tiny uh, Minotaur. <clears throat> I have a list for you. Okay. What? I don't know, but it's okay. He can submit the list into slot A, and I'll see what I can do. Okay. And she shakes her head a little bit, and she walks away and uh, leaves you guys to your own devices, unless you had anything else currently. Oh, she turns. Um, yes. So, there is a board here next to the door, and she gestures, and there's like this plain like silver piece of metal right by the door and she points at it and as even as she's pointing it like you see in common uh appear uh first session starts uh two hours after dawn on the morrow uh Right after dawn, about an hour after dawn, there is breakfast, and then um, all of you actually use some arcane abilities. I believe you will report to um, the school of uh, Arcanum. Yes, all of you will start school of Arcanum tomorrow morning. Uh, that is usual for those who use arcane abilities to practice uh, use of your basic magical elements. Um, and then you'll probably split up a little bit and learn some of the more powerful abilities that uh, early students will know. Uh, after that, uh, you guys are welcome to roam and wander and explore the campus as much as you'd like. Uh, help yourselves to pretty much anything. Uh, the cafeteria again will be open until about an hour after uh, dusk. And then the arcane gate is open from the most parts all the time. Be careful. Do you have a library? We do. At uh, the Great Library, uh, you will be shown and actually granted access to a little later on, as uh, it is not 100% safe if you are not familiar with the procedures and everything. The librarians on the first day now are setting things up. Oh, okay. But, yes, you will definitely get access at some point. Excellent. I can't wait. All right. Well, enjoy. And uh, I'll be back. Uh, if, if you need me, you, you know where to find me. And I'll check in perhaps later on and just make sure... Uh, everyone's alive. <laughs> As she's leaving, I'll say thank you in perfect dwarvish. Oh. And she, she'll turn and respond in dwarvish. Well, fancy that. A dwarvish speaker. Uh, anything you guys would like to do for the rest of the evening? <clears throat> Run and cannonball on the first bed, I see. Okay. Uh... You guys are welcome to set up and kind of situate your room. Uh, the robes themselves, and as you kind of like go into each room, there's like a note that says, um, you know, first first year students, your 
uh, robe of the initiate is in your closet. It is to be worn uh, during school sessions. Does it fit? Uh, do you try it on? Yeah. So you put it on and it seems huge, but then like as you're like looking at it and like kind of trying to tuck it in, it shrinks so that it fits you perfectly. Ooh. I look to everyone else and say, I'll be back later. Okay. I'm heading to the forge. Yeah, I had a feeling. <laughs> Will Rex um, takes this moment to, oops, sorry. Uh, he takes a moment to select his room, um, probably uh, the closest to the exit, uh, if that one is available. Um, and he closes the door. All right. <laughs> Perfect. He values his alone time. Yeah, nothing, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. All right. <laughs> So the evening kind of goes and you're able to get yourself situated. You're able to go work at the forge, get yourself familiar. You walk into the forge and the building itself is made out of this like metal that almost looks like it was hammered. Like it's a hammered metal like exterior frame with um, like metal sheet roof to it with um, a little bit of a smoke stack coming up where the smoke from the forges uh, are filtered out. And if you walk through the door, there is a massive doorway um, as like the main entrance. And you see a tall kind of blue skinned creature with white hair with a like leather kind of like jerkin on like a um, apron to like keep off any soot particles or whatever coming at him. And he's sitting there holding giant tongs and a huge hammer with a piece of metal there and he's bling, bling, slamming out a piece of metal and working working out the piece of metal as you walk in <clears throat> cool. i'll wait till he's not busy before i actually say anything <laughs> yeah he um will do a couple more hits of the hammer and you see the metal starting to cool a little bit and he notices that at that point and sticks it back into an open forge that is um, blazing and then he will set down his tongs and his hammer just kind of methodically on like a workbench near this forge that everything seems to be a little bit larger for and he'll turn and look over oh visitor on the first day hello Little Warforged. Hello, I am Gollum, and I smith things. So I wanted to see what the forge was like here. Ah, I'm Jugant. I am the forge master here at the school. You are already familiar with forge work? I am. I was trained by dwarves. Mm. You must be Gollum, right? Yes. I'm saying that correct, am I not? It is correct. Okay. Yes, well, I was told you will be joining the School of Artifice. So I believe I'll see plenty of you. Did you want to do work? Mm, not today. Just wanted to see the forge today. Ah, yes. We'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, as you see, we have eight forges to be used for students and our materials are here extra tools can be found along that wall and he kind of starts pointing out the various elements of the forge and it see there's like eight large like furnaces that act as heating all the metal and then all the tubes of like the chimneys go up and form like at the top of the roof and go out through one main chimney opening um and there are various like troughs of water next to each one and all the implements that you would uh, need. Uh, hammers and anvils and all that stuff. All right, well, any questions? I am here most times. When's the forge open? Hmm, I mean, when do you want to forge? We Go all, for a <laughs> We all have strikes of inspiration whenever we like. If I am not here, one of my aides will be, 
and they will see to its use and maintenance. So we never okay. really shut our doors. What are you working on, by the way? Oh, I'm going to make a new sword. My cousin needs one, so I'm going to make him one. Sounds fun. It should and be. Watch him, watch him work on it. Yeah. He'll pull it back out and start hammering it out. And depending on how long you decide to watch him, um, over the next few hours, he starts hammering out more and more of this lump of metal into the shape of a very large sword. Um, it's blade probably longer than your body. Um, and as it starts to cool and he starts to polish it in places, um, as he's still working on it, and it, he obviously is still going to be working on it. You can see in areas where he cleans up to kind of get a judgment of everything that it looks like there's many folds in this um, metal. And it's almost like this um, light blue, like metallic look to it as he kind of cleans it up and then judges and puts it back in and, you know, goes through various processes of um, forming this blade, which even by the end when he finally sets down his tongs and leaves the blade there, it's more just like the general shape and not 100% done yet as he looks to you. Well, I think that should call it for the day. <laughs> And then um, as he starts to walk out, um, you'll kind of notice a, um, a female centaur will kind of like trot in and she'll look up at him. Heading out now, Jorgent? Yes, I think I've gone my limit for today. And then she'll kind of like start cleaning and working her way through the, the forge, just like cleaning up his, you know, the bits of metal that may have fallen or whatever, as he lumbers slowly out and makes his way out into the campus. Okay. Well, when he's done working, and if she's not starting to work, I'm going to go back to the door. Yeah, <laughs> no, she seems to more just be focused on cleaning and setting, and like she grabs a couple metal ingots here and there and starts putting them near each forge, like she's setting up for tomorrow's classes and for anyone who may, you know, need them. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So the next morning, unless there's anything you guys desire to do, um, the room starts to grow lighter as it starts to get lighter outside as kind of a way to help you guys realize that it's time to get up. Um, and eventually you'll start hearing like this kind of... Um, drumming coming through the hall like boom 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 and it like starts picking up speed and volume and like you hear a bunch of students like complaining and, and groaning as they start stammering out and you can hear people talking in the halls and um all sorts of voices and various languages and various um backgrounds as they exit the Hall of the Initiates and a um, uh, a bunch of students start heading towards uh, the cafeteria and some start spreading out amongst the grounds. Is there anything you guys would like to do at the moment? I put on my thingy. Is it still my size? Yep. It seems to stay your size um, as you um, overnight. Everything. I think I'll do the same. I'll put the. I'll, I'll try it on for the first time. Like, you know, I've not really prepared for uh, for the day, mm -hmm. so uh, I just I just put it on and uh, sort of mill about the um, just just outside uh, of the dorm. And I'll wait for the people that I I know. Uh, it's be, um, <laughs> for you guys. So I'll just I'll just wait out there and. Take a look at the uh, we'll go by while I uh, while I wait. Perfect. I uh, come out of my dorm, wild-eyed, hair a complete mess. You can possibly see a piece of candy stuck to it. And I'm like, "What's going on?" And I look around. Breakfast. What? 
breakfast. Oh yeah, awesome. Excellent part of the day. <laughs> just hear me laughing from the doorway where I've been where I actually slept. I just went to sleep in the doorway. And uh, in the doorway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um Evan just just walks out with, you know, barely anything on. <clears throat> I'm glad I can't see that right now. Because <laughs> he would be giving you some <laughs> some scowls right about now if he was actually in the door. <laughs> I mean, he's got like a robe on and, and some, you know, short, short pants, you know, okay. that kind of idea. But that's about it. Okay. You know, he, he's, he's, he's looking for his boots right now and finds one of them, puts one on, puts the other one on. Okay, I'm ready for breakfast. <laughs> I'll meet you guys in class. I just Wait, my class. We got <laughs> class. What's with okay. that? after breakfast? There's class. Oh, so it starts today. That's what the nice dwarf lady told us yesterday. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> so we're we supposed to be like dressed up and stuff or something. What? Your gray robe from your room. There's a gray robe in my room. When he says that, I just walk into his room and throw his robe at him. <laughs> oh, this thing. Okay. I thought it was like for funerals and stuff. I think if we don't go to class, it might be our funeral. And, okay. And I just put it on without taking anything else off. <laughs> And it, it kind of like lengthens and shrinks on the waist a little bit so it fits you properly. Um, this is absolutely fascinating. We need so to get are you more. wearing two robes right now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and his current robe looks a little baggy because of it, but it's, it seems to still have like fit around whatever he's got on. Um, so, so. Golem, we need to get some more of these. I have an idea. Oh, God. <laughs> Can I have my crossbow bolt back? Oh, yeah. So we, we, it, I breakfast, whatever meal. I think it's underneath my bed. Okay. You want me to get I, it? No, I'll go find it. Okay. And I go to try and find my crossbow bolt, which is still glowing. Yeah, it, 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 it's got a couple of donuts stuck on it. <laughs> whatever. I just put them on your bed. Okay. All right. <laughs> you guys are able to go off and get yourself breakfast of whatever sort. Uh, the cafeteria has a large assortment of uh, both vegetable and uh, meat options, um, various breads, uh, some seafood, even some pastries, various things uh, kind of arranged. And you see a bunch of students kind of like lined up getting uh, getting food. And then you see, um, you know, everyone's eating. Some take them out into the commons area and sit out there and eat. Some take them out under the trees. Like, it seems like the people who have been here a little bit longer have their own set spaces. But you can find tables or wherever you guys want to go. Breakfast kind of passes and there's a few people that kind of gather together and then you see like servants start coming through and like picking up plates and trays that were left behind and taking them to clean up um and then as uh kind of breakfast time starts to wane you start hearing uh bells kind of chiming through the school this very like even ding 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 and then you'll hear a voice come across um, and you hear, for the first year students, that sound means it is time to head to your assigned locations. Where are we going? Question, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, dwarf had mentioned that you're going to go to the School of Arcanum, uh, since you okay. were all... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so, if we, uh, I guess I'll go back to that on the feed here. Yeah, it's still working. Uh, the School of Arcanum is across the way, um, up kind of near the walls of the 
western, northwestern side. <clears throat> so, a large, like, marble building, and standing outside is a uh, male half, half elf. Um, he is dressed in kind of like a suit. Um, it is like a uh, almost like a tweed look on his actual like you got like a suit coat it's like tweed look uh, and like tan pants and a black shirt um, and he's standing outside and he's got a um, pipe that he's kind of puffing on and as people arrive he says uh, first years gather around gather relax um, I'm missing two and I'll sit and wait and sees two more come up. First years, yes, very good. You're a half elf. Uh, I've heard about you. She's, <laughs> she, uh, uh, Evan points to Wolverax. She's a half dragon. I don't think dragonborn. That is how it works. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> I am Lawson Verlimen. I am the Dean of Mage Studies. That means I am in charge of the School of Arcanum and in charge of all all that use arcane magics. I will start you off for today. C please come on in. Come on in. And he'll lead you into the hall and down past many doors and many things. There's probably about a dozen of you guys that are gathered here for this first lesson. And he'll like lead you into a room that's probably seats about 20 or so and he'll walk up to the front and he'll, he starts um, looks over at you guys some of you I know have abilities already uh, some have already explored that but here we are going to practice and uh, hone your abilities such that you can reliably cast certain spells over and over. I know I have a few sorcerers amongst you. Anyone want to display what they can do already? I'll stand up and just walk away from everyone because I'm afraid that somebody's getting cut by a sword if I stand too close. And I'm going to take out the um, whetstone from my pack of smith's tools. And I'm just going to try and crush it in my hand. And you notice these spectral blades appear around me and spin? Oh, very nice. There we go. All right. Um, perfect. See? Simple, easy spells that you can replicate over and over. Um, and he'll wave his hand, and this, like, mystical hand will form, like, floating in the, the air, and it'll, like, pick up a book and kind of, like, move it around. This is one of my favorites. It's called Mage Hand. Uh, it's fairly simple. It uh, is, can be quite useful, assuming uh, you are practice and do prep things, right? Uh, anyone want to learn this one? Ooh. 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 Oh, yes, uh, the young man. Your name? Evan. Evan. All right, Evan. Uh, please come forward. And he starts to, like... Uh, move his hands and say a few words and the hand will appear again in a different location now um, and he'll kind of why don't you try all right uh give me an arcana check not horrible dice roll dice and you're pretty good at it so. no <laughs> do we have other weapons on us yeah you can bring you bring in whatever Whatever it is you desired to bring in, they don't seem to be too worried. It's a 14. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it takes you a few tries to, like... I get distracted. Hone the hand movement and say the words properly. Um, mm -hmm. And... But you're able to eventually apparate a magical hand that floats. This could be useful. So, so people around us are like trying out their spells and stuff, or are we all sitting and listening to him? Uh, yeah, there's a right now. Most everyone's kind of like listening and um, paying attention, and then he will gesture to anyone. 
Uh, and the rest of you, let's see. Uh, and he'll kind of go through. There's a few students who go, uh, I think this one was stated as yours. And he'll show, you know, a couple of different simple, like, spell maneuvers. And they'll start trying them. And some will succeed. And some will take a while. Um, but he moves on eventually from each student. And come over to Wolverax. Uh, our dragonborn friend. What, um... From what I'm told, affinity to, let's see, fire and uh, a little bit of lightning, right? All right. All right. So something simple, like a firebolt, perhaps? And he, like, waves his hand at a fire forms and launches across the room at, like, a target that's on the wall. Like a piece of paper, really. It's like, you know, with the target thing. And it, like, burns mm -hmm. up. And then behind it's another one. It's like perfect and untouched. Okay. Would you like to try? I shall give it my best. Yeah. Uh, so he um, he does that. Um, yeah, he holds out his hands and um, with a with a thrust, sort of uh, like that. Yeah. Um, does uh, gives it gives it a shot. All right. Uh, you can go ahead and just roll your to hit. Uh, roll my to hit. Uh, so that plus would be, five. Yeah. Uh, clickety click. I get uh, 23. 23. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, you seem to have no problem. The magic in your blood cool. is strong. You're um, perhaps experienced with this one. And you hit the target almost more accurately than he probably even did. Um, and your target burns up and behind it is another one that looks exactly the same. Well, okay. very well done. Very well done. Very promising. Come over to uh, Minos. And uh, you look uh, be Before he reaches my table, when uh -huh. Minos watches him coming over, uh, he hits the table with his spear and casts a blade because he doesn't want him. Uh, well, he doesn't want him to ask him to cast fire because that never ends well. Hmm. Well, you've got abilities. What else can you do? Fire. Well, would you like to try to hit the target? It's okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, since I have uh, the combat casting thingy mm -hmm. uh, does, how, how does he uh, do when he casts the spell is he just holding his spear still I, I mean you can you don't have to be holding the spear um, but yeah that allows you to have your hands full and still cast amongst other cool attributes of it uh, if I remember all correctly or cast your con, which is the important part. Somatic opponents spells even when you have weapons or a shield in one or both hands. Use your action. Cool. Yeah, so you're able to, so whether you want to use a spear, is that part of your normal way to cast a spell, or whether you want to cast it without it? That is all up to me. He normally, when, when he's been allowed to cast spells and be out, is normally when the tribe has been attacked. So that, that's why he's always holding his spear when he's casting spells, because here's your weapon, now stand here and do damage. Yeah, cool. So yeah. he kind of aims the spear uh, as like a pointer when he tosses his spells. All right, so go ahead. And... He, he, he very nervously tries to send a firebolt through the wall. Can't be that hard to hit a wall. Yeah, go ahead and roll. He hopes. Roll your to uh, hit. 14. 14, yeah. So it takes you maybe a little bit to get it to happen because you're not under the same stress that you normally are when you uh, manifest some of your powers. But you are able to um, will the power to go and hit the target. Um, well, uh, that spear seems to be a crutch, perhaps, but we'll, we'll work on that. Uh, as time goes, you will learn to work past 
we all start with some crutches that we may use. But uh, as you grow in power and confidence, especially for your confidence, uh, you'll be able to do it without. Um, and so the class will continue on and it'll go and work through uh, teaching each of you various uh, cantrips, various abilities, um, until you guys hear bells go off. So at this point, you would have um, all your cantrips kind of access to that. Um, and you'll be able to go off and work into your other uh, classes. You'll be kind of guided after that. He'll hand each of you papers and um, Wolverax and Minos will go to the kind of like a, a room down the hall where the sorcerers are and they'll start teaching you uh, higher, more difficult spells. Um, the beginning of your first level spells and have you practicing them. Um, and there are uh, like there's a couple actually in this room, a couple of sorcerers that are helping small groups learn different spells and different abilities and making sure that they're safe. Um, Golem, you'll be sent off to the School of Artifice and there's um, a room in there where they'll start teaching you the fundamentals of you know, Artifice and the further because what your master taught you was somewhat limited and um, not fully encompassed. Like he always seemed to be holding back, um, wanting perhaps for you to get here before he went too far. And Evan, you stay in the very, like, in this building as well, but you head off to another room, and they, on each desk as you enter the room, is, like, a leather-bound book um, that's sitting on each desk for each student as they enter. <clears throat> And the instructor will point out, uh, before you all are uh, your very first wizard book. Uh, here you can write down any of your spells and perfect it. As you go through time, you may learn many more spells and add it to the book. And you are able to add more pages as you go if you need. Um, it is the way of us, many of us are collectors and we will collect spells over our lifetime and span. Absolutely fascinating. Um, for the sake of brevity, uh, you will all kind of learn your first level spells and uh, as the day goes on, and it does seem like a long day as you have to practice and they take you out. Um, and at one point, uh, the four of you are led into the mage arena. Um, go back to Owlbear really quick. Um, you're all led to the Magecraft arena in the center of the area. And as you're led in, you can see kind of along the far opening area, there are, um, there's a figure in all black standing there and around him are several humanoid figures that are just kind of like milling about, standing about and uh, you can see off to the sides that there are actually like boxes uh, long, thin, skinny boxes um, kind of laid out and stacked up along one wall and there, one of the instructors steps forward and says mm, now is time to for you guys to practice on moving targets uh, here we go and you see these creatures start shambling around don't worry you won't hurt them they've been dead for a while and there's several like zombies that are like just kind of maneuvering about and um, they gesture have at it practice whatever you want to try on them <coughs> said that they're undead, right? Yeah. So, could I try and heal them? Mm, certainly try. Okay. I'm going to walk up to the closest one and pull out a blazing hot um, stick and try and cauterize the wounds, casting Cure Wounds. Cool. Uh, that particular one, like, yeah, it, you 
do some work on the wounds and it like flares a little bit and this like glowing energy will kind of go through them and you see some of the open scar tissue and such like heal back together though still you know doesn't seem to come to life at all other than it's unlife <clears throat> but it just stands there and, and lets you cauterize it and do whatever I heal for 11 by the way okay cool yeah it definitely looks hardier than the rest of them at this point um as the other ones are just kind of like milling about and some look kind of worse for wear um some with scorch marches and marks and stuff on them already i'm looking for one that has pants okay you find or one with cloak. you find one with pants yeah <laughs> um most I of them have something covering them so. i immediately cast mage hand uh-huh and as he's going long i use the mage hand to grab the back of his pants and give him a wedgie all right <laughs> yeah you're able to kind of like tug up at the back of his pants and you know it slows for half a second but then it steps forward and your mage hand is not able to hold it back and eventually it will mm. pop out as the zombie weighs more than your mage hand in capacity it can't hold a lot of weight mm -hmm. mm. all right <clears throat> there is one that will step up and reach out their hand and a energy like a blue energy will sparkle across the air and almost looking like little snowflakes forming as it goes and it slams into a zombie and it like starts to frost over and slow down as it walks forward slowly oh that's a cool spell <clears throat> and i kind of migrate over to that person and start talking <laughs> to them yeah. they start explaining you know what spell it is and that they learned it and you know what it does and kind of clinically like you are like oh yes and you do these maneuvers and <clears throat> you mean like this and i start mimicking and whatnot and i unleash ray of frost I forgot you even had that spell. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, you zap out and roll a um, roll a spell attack. 14? Yeah. It's a zombie. They're not really hard to hit. Um, so, yeah, you, you zap, zap that very one, um, and it, like, frosts up, and then, like, you can tell that it freezes, and then it falls and shatters on the ground. As absolutely amazing and I begin talking with this person yeah. getting trying to get their name what they are where they're from and I tell them all about me too so okay um, that's what Evan does for the rest of the time period yeah you will uh, come to know Cornelia Finnegund a uh, female halfling from uh, Coglery and she'll you know, ask you a bit about where you're from and, um, you know, just kind of geek out with you. Awesome. All right. Anyone else uh, going to attempt any spells or? Sure. Uh, what, what is. Okay, you, you, you first. Uh, Me first? Yeah, yeah. Um... yeah I'll, I'll go dead last. That's, that's beautiful. <laughs> Uh, Linus will try to catapult on the zombies. He picks up stuff and start like clicking on them mm -hmm. until he feels like he's up and ready to release his power to make them bigger. So he's kind of like tossing at them and getting their attention and then he rides away and then he tosses them more and then he runs <laughs> away. <laughs> so you're casting a yeah. uh, catapult? Yeah. Okay. It picks up a small rock and then it turns into a big rock. All right. Yeah. It, um, you're able to launch this rock. Uh, go ahead and roll your. Uh, He's gonna roll a deck save. Oh, it's deck save for them. Okay. Yeah. This is gonna go really well. Um, oh, deck save someday. Oh, what's the DC? <laughs> uh, your spell save DC. Uh, Thirteen. 13. Uh, surprisingly, as you shoot it, and it's it's newer to you, this spell, 
um, as the catapult goes launching, uh, the zombie just kind of goes, and the stone goes over its shoulder, um, and it, like, flies out, and then, like, will skitter and plop into the water at the end of the stadium. That was close. I rolled a two to see if my wild magic would do anything. <laughs> oh, nice. That's right, I forgot I should have the wild magic table ready to go. Um, yeah, cool. Um, that didn't help his self-confidence. <laughs> one uh, student steps forward and, like, walks up to a, a couple of zombies that are grouped together and smacks their hand together and like a th wave of thunder goes out and both of them get like knocked back and stagger around a little bit. <clears throat> Wolrex, did you want to cast spells? I, I do. Uh, sure. Um, I will I will attempt uh, create bonfire under uh, one of these uh, one of these zombified um people um yeah just, just one second let me just read the fluff uh, yeah okay um so yes i will i will uh concentrate on uh, one of the zombies in front of me okay um and sort of um sort of point just at just at its at its feet yeah um, and this blazing hot uh, fire just forms up like right underneath the zombie and it's probably the same one that Minos tried to zap with catapult and it just like mm -hmm. steps out of the way really quickly and it's, for some reason I'm rolling really good for zombies <laughs> on that right. roll um, but yeah like but your your power your skill your aiming was good it's just that the uh, zombie moved out of the way really quickly um, and avoided it but another one will like shamble in and um as you can maintain that spell for a little while for up to a minute i think it is isn't it? um another one like shambles oh, no. forward and yeah. starts to burn up a bit cool so you guys are able to practice whatever spells further harnessing your abilities and learning uh your basic uh first level spells and your cantrips on various zombies and as some of the zombies get destroyed um the figure in black starts opening up crates and rising up new ones and bringing them out for more students to practice on. Um, and I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for the day here. And uh, we will pick up next time uh, figuring out some more stuff. But uh, yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you to my wonderful players. Uh, and... We're going to get more into more stuff. We just wanted, I wanted everyone to get a school feel in the start of it. Um, and we'll get all into knowing each other a little bit better as we go. Um, thank you uh, for joining us here at the XP Guild. Uh, if you enjoyed this, check out our YouTube channel uh, under the XP Guild. Uh, we've got a few videos up there already of some one shots, a couple of um, tutorials and um, building of uh, various maps and stuff uh, that Dave has done, um, some character builds and such, and there's many more to come as we're working on much more stuff uh, as we find the time to record and edit videos and uh, check out uh, especially Retro Firefly for uh, joining us. Check out her stuff, everyone. Um, keep tuned we're gonna try for this every thursday for a period of time um we'll try to do maybe a seasonal thing and then i'll we'll take a short break and let everyone recoup and need to replan and hopefully continue on uh with more in the future so uh tune in next thursday 10 a.m or 10 30 a.m pacific time uh 5 30 p.m utc and whatever else that breaks down to for all you other wonderful people out there um, twitch.tv slash the XP guy.